Welcome back to the shop, my friends. Steve here at SKS Props, and this is part five of my HD Foam Samurai Armor build. In this video, we're gonna be tackling the Sode, or shoulder armor. Now, if you have not checked out parts one through four for all the rest of the armor set, those are available on my channel, along with free PDF files that you can download from my website, so you can follow along with the build series and make your own set of Samurai Armor. Now, just like everything else, the shoulders are made completely out of my HD Foam, which you can find over at Blick Art Material. And if you want to continue to help support this channel, be sure to pick up some HD foam from the links that are in the description section and those that are on my website. So I want to show you what it takes to put this shoulder armor together and paint it. Let's go ahead and get started. To make the shoulders, I'm going to start by taking part A and tracing and cutting that out of some 4mm foam two times. For the shoulder armor to keep its curve, I'm going to utilize part B and I'm going to trace and cut that out of some 6mm foam. A 2mm detail strip is going to be glued along the edge of this piece. Super glue is added to the bottom and now I can glue part B onto part A. Once the adhesive is cured, additional 2mm strips could be placed along the edge. To match the chest in the back, I'm going to use part C, which is a decorative detail strip made out of 2mm foam. After this has been glued into place, parts D and E are also cut out of 2mm strips and glued on top. Like I had mentioned in other videos, you don't have to use this design, you can make whatever you'd like for your armor. To make up the individual armor panels, I'm going to take part F and I'm going to trace and cut that out of some 4mm foam 8 times. 2mm detail strips are also glued around the perimeter of all these pieces as well. For the bottom of the shoulder armor, I'm going to use part G. This is also traced and cut out of some 4mm foam. This piece is a little bit bigger and has a slight curve at the bottom. This curve is going to match part H, which is cut out of some 2mm foam and then glued onto part G. A smooth sanding drum is used to round over all of the edges, and once again a heat tool is used to create all of the lace holes within the foam. To match the texture of all the other pieces, the tinfoil technique is once again applied, using a heat gun and a small ball of tinfoil. After sealing and priming the foam, Liquitex Red Oxide was dry brushed onto the surface, along with a mixture of cadmium red as a highlight. Dirty Down Dark Brown Spray is once again applied to all the pieces to give it a weathered and worn look. After the pigments have dried, additional paint can be taken away using a damp paper towel. To lock all these colors into place, I'm doing a light dusting on the surface of a flat spray. Golden Brand Iridescent Bronze is painted along the trim using a filbert brush. Utrecht Brand Iridescent Gold is added to this as a two-tone highlight. Dirty Down Rust can now be applied to all the gold. Iridescent gold is used once again as a final highlight. The painting process for all of this is extensively covered in parts 1, 2, and 3 if you'd like a deeper dive. I'm once again going to be using the athletic lacing from Shoelace Express. This time around, the thing to keep in mind is that the weave needs to be tighter on the edges and not as much in the middle. This will allow the armor pieces to round over and conform to the shape of the shoulder. When I get to the bottom, I can see the curve and I can adjust the tension in the laces to match. Through part H, I'm going to do a crisscross design that's going to match the back of the helmet and the neck guard. Once complete, all the excess lacing can be trimmed away, cauterized, and glued into place. 
Now I'm going to take part I and transfer that onto some thick PVC board two times. Like how the chest connected, these are going to attach the sode to the watagami straps. A watered down mixture of Mars Black can now be applied to part C. Seven fifty paracord is inserted through part I and some leather strapping is used to secure it. Metal washers are painted and glued onto part B. These are going to help reinforce the foam for the cording that's going to be ran through. Two additional washers are added to the middle of the watagami straps as well. Lacing is woven through the strap to make a loop, and the excess on the bottom is covered with a small strip of 2mm foam to keep it in place. This is going to allow the shoulders to attach to the straps. The laces attached to part I can now be glued to the underside and middle of each shoulder. Additional 2mm foam strips are glued on top to secure them into place. The shoulder armor can now be attached to the loop to the watagami strap. Laces are ran through the two holes at the front of part B and through the laces underneath of the watagami straps. The ends of the cord are frayed for a more decorative look. Before it's tied off, this is what secures the shoulder to the watagami straps. This same lacing process is also done to the two holes on the back of part B as well. So you all can see the steps that I took to create the Sode or shoulder armor for my HD foam Samurai armor set. Now in the next video, I'm going to be making the armor that will be below the waist. So I'm going to be addressing the panels on the chest and on the back that I had fabricated earlier. And hopefully this inspires you to create a Samurai set of your own. Now if you are building any of my builds or utilizing some HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD Foam.